welcome to this video and in today's vlog I'm going to be reading books set on a cruise on a cruise ship. <laughs> Hi friends! <laughs> the lighting in here is terrible. Let's just get that out of the way. Like, I don't even know where I can film. Just in front of the toilet door. <laughs> so hi! I'm on holiday! I am on a cruise to the Norwegian fjords that we're going on. I am so excited. It's the first day. It's very busy. I don't think I'm gonna have time to film much today. We're kind of running around just getting ourselves sorted and unpacked. But I thought I would quickly chat to you about the books that I've bought. So I've bought books with me set on cruises to read on the cruise. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular. I just thought this would be fun to like be in the setting and to read the books in the setting that they are. So I've bought three books. Now we've got a lot planned this week. It's not gonna be just like doing nothing. We're gonna do activities on the ship and off the ship. So I don't know how much reading I'm gonna get done. I've bought three, but if I read one, if I read two, if I read all three, it's fine. So the one I definitely want to start with is a new release and that's A Fatal Crossing by Tom Hindle. This is set in the 1920s and there's a man murdered on this ship and I think like a ship's employee and a Scotland Yard policemen investigate it together. I've heard some pretty good things about this from some of my patrons. I love historical settings so I'm really excited. It's a new release and I haven't been reading a lot of new releases this year. For goodness sake, get yourself sorted out. Then I thought the second one I would read, so hopefully by this time we'll be like in the fjords, is The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. This is gonna be my fourth Ruth Ware. I'm really, really excited to get to it. I believe this is set in the Norwegian fjords, or at least in Norway on a cruise. I mean, come on. Like, it, <laughs> it couldn't be any more perfect. Our main character sees a body thrown overboard from next door cabin, but the records show that no one ever checked into that cabin and no passengers are missing on board. How exciting. I think this is just gonna be perfect to read whilst we're in the setting. I'm so excited and I love Ruth Ware. I've given Ruth Ware five stars, five stars and four stars. So I have really good luck with her. So I feel like this is going to be like another five star or four star. And then the last one, which I'm not sure we'll get to, is Dangerous Women by Hope Adams. Well, this isn't really a cruise either. This is like, this is, <laughs> we're pushing the limits a bit here. The rules don't apply. 180 petty convicts of women are all being transported on this bo boat to Australia. And on board, our main character makes it her duty to redeem them, enlisting a select few to create an intricate quilt. With each stitch, they are tied closer together. What the fuck? But when one woman is murdered, her work is threatened. Are they innocent or are they murderers? Is this actually the question? I don't know if we'll get to that one because it's like, you know, prisons on a boat you know it's not really a cruise but these two definitely are cruises so they are priority I'm going to start with a fatal crossing and yeah I got to hurry away we're going we're doing lots of things so I'll probably start the vlog properly tomorrow good morning <laughs> so it's the first proper day it's very early it's 8 a.m but it's actually 7 a.m because the time changed hang on I'm the lift door is open please exit now <laughs> Loads of people are already up having breakfast. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna walk through here because I don't think anyone will be in here. I'm going to get a facial this morning, which I'm so excited for. I've never had a facial in my life. It was cheaper to do it early in the morning. How cute is this place? Isn't it so cute? So I'm getting a facial. So I'm bright and early for that in the spa. And we've got massages later in the holiday, but I feel like my skin is already stressed out from traveling. So I'm excited. I just got back from the facial and it was amazing. <laughs> it was really, really good. I had, a, I had a, it was so relaxing. I feel like I need a facial. I need to just get rich and have a facial every day. <laughs> but my skin feels really, really good. And we've got the, um, it's like the formal night tonight. So I'm glad I actually had it done today so that my skin looks good tonight. But um, we're just gonna go ahead for breakfast and then I'm gonna go to a dance class. <laughs> And then we're doing archery. So I don't think I'll have time to check in reading wise, but that's the plans for this morning up until like 
lunchtime. Then we'll probably have lunch after that. So they're the plans. So yeah, I'm hungry, so let's go to breakfast. Okay, it's now much later. It's the evening. What did we do since I last spoke to you? When did I last speak to you? Started again. No, no, no. What have we done today? We went in the pool, went in the hot tub, had lunch, came back here, cute. slept, looked cute. I'm really worried about having to look on camera because I just don't like my makeup. You guys. <laughs> I'm going home. The mirror in there is homophobic. I can't tell what my makeup looks like. And the lighting in here is terrible. I mean, this is not vlogging lighting. Anyways, I have been reading my book. I have a feeling I'm only gonna read two in this vlog, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I'm gonna get around to Dangerous Women. But the two that I really wanted to read were these two. So I had a Fatal Crossing and I'm about 120 pages in and I'm really enjoying it. It's like, it's a debut and I think it's a pretty solid debut. It has a little bit of, I don't know if Agatha Christie writing is the right word, but it's definitely paying... Do you think so, Tom? I mean, I've listened to a couple minutes of it, and it sounds like people are dying. <laughs> no! <laughs> so he said, he said, he said, um, I'm Hewitt. And he said, uh, and then someone said, mm, he didn't want to give up his name. It's all about detectives. Isn't it, it is about detectives. So, but I, when I was saying Agatha Christie, I meant in terms of the writing. Like, well, I can't hear writing. No, but I'm not sure if it quite is, but it is definitely paying homage to her. So basically the premise is, is that it's set in 1924, there's 2,000 passengers on the ship and a guy is found dead. Now the captain of the ship just wants to call it an accident because he's like at the bottom of some steps, but then a policeman from Scotland Yard storms in and he's like, bitch, this was a murder and I'm going to investigate it. And the captain's like, no you ain't. In four days this gets turned over to New York and it's not my problem anymore. The police officer's like, yeah, okay, I am going to do it. And the captain's like, well, if you have to, this, uh, what's he, a, a ship's officer, one of the ship's officers, he has to follow you around and like watch everything you're doing. So it's told from the ship of officer's perspective and he also obviously has some like tragic stuff that's happened to him in the past. It seems like he had a partner and a child maybe that like aren't around anymore. So it's gonna be like a simultaneously a mystery of this murder mystery of the ship with finding out a bit about his shady past. And I'm really enjoying it. Firstly, I will say, I'm actually really enjoying reading this on the ship because so many things are like being mentioned and you're like, oh my God, I know what that looks like. Or like the other day, one of the uh, officers of the ship was like, oh, I'm, I'm speaking from the bridge over on the tannoy or whatever. And I didn't know what the bridge is. I just thought it was like a bridge, like a walking bridge. But <laughs> then I learned what it was in the book and it's not just a walking bridge. I'd say like the mystery, it's like a very, classic mystery. It's not doing anything crazy. It's pretty like old schooly historical. I'm enjoying this kind of unlikely duo of these these two guys that don't really like each other and we can't really trust either of them. They both have secrets. And yeah, I think the writing is really, really good for a debut. I'm really shocked. This only has like 300 ratings or something on Goodreads. Like barely anyone's read this yet. And so far I'm really enjoying it. And I'm just so glad I'm reading it like on the ship. Heard. You like what you heard? Well, that's high praise. Yeah, it sounded... Sounded booky. Yeah, it sounded like a book. Sounded like a book. <laughs> it sounded like Agatha Christie. Yeah, I think it is quite Christie-esque. Like I said in some other videos, when I went and looked at the author's Goodreads page, he reads a lot of non-fiction about Agatha Christie. Like, he's read one that I have about um, the use of poisons and, like, forensics in her books. So I think that shows that he, like likes her and wants to kind of emulate her stuff. We haven't shown you our room, I just realized, but there's nothing to see, is there? It's a box. <laughs> so tonight is formal night on the cruise. There's one night where everyone's supposed to like dress up posh. So I've done my hair and makeup and I'm about to get changed. We're going to like a special dinner tonight for that. And then, yeah, we've got our big walk tomorrow. Tomorrow's our big excursion, hyping up, hi hyping up, hiking up Pulpit Rock which is a big rock 
I'm a bit scared. We've had a few nightmares of dying. <laughs> Are you tough enough for the job? Mm, no. But we're getting a coach there, so I'll be able to read this on the coach there and back. And yeah, I think this is a really fun read. First time trying beef wellington. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Good morning. Today is our first day. We're gonna be in Norway. <laughs> and Tom and I are going on our big walk today. So I'm getting my, I call them stompers, like my hiking boots on. Um, we need to pop down to the buffet for breakfast, but we still need to finish packing everything up. But we haven't seen, obviously, because we're in an inside cabin, we haven't seen what it looks like yet. So we might just quickly pop in to Tom's grandma's room because she's got a balcony. But yeah, I'm really, really excited. We're going up this massive rock and I'll bring you with me. I think I'll try and read a bit in the coach on the way there because I think it's about like a 40 minute drive to where we're going. Um, but yeah, I'm barely awake, but <laughs> very, very excited. Whoa. Whoa. Let me see what's over there. Look at these little houses. <laughs> We're halfway up the hike. <laughs> that is not correct. And it's amazing, but it's hard, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a lot of big stone steps, but it's so good. It's like unlike anything we've done before, isn't it? So we're gonna carry on. Get <laughs> away. Oh, sorry. Sheridan, the view. That, that's the that's the sea over there. I climbed up all the way from I down there. Think it's so look, we just climbed up all this, and now there's a swamp with a bridge. <laughs> I've got a migraine, I've got a headache. Come on, lass. No, forget it. We're here. <laughs> I don't know what to say. We made it. Well, kind of. Show them the actual rock is there, but we felt too sick. Yeah, <laughs> we've got a bit scared. <laughs> but this is amazing. It's because it was all cloudy and we couldn't, we couldn't see down here. I mean, but look now, at the clouds moving. But now it? because it's stopped raining so much, we can see, but I, I didn't, can't make it to the actual. Should we may try? No. No way, no way. No. That shit. I'm going home. I can't tell you. Guys, what an amazing walk it's been. We haven't filmed as much because we wanted to make it here, like by the time we had to. Um, but wow, it's amazing. It's amazing. It is. Absolutely. Right, 
Morning. <laughs> I can't even hold this up. Right. Hi. So. <laughs> it's a mess. Yesterday's. I was gonna say walk. It wasn't even a walk. I mean, look at my bag. We'll get into it. <laughs> Yesterday's hike was one of the hardest things I've ever done. We, I can't, I can't tell you guys enough how it was just like big rocks you were climbing. And it was like a five hour walk, all in all. And um, I'm very tired. <laughs> It was really hard. I really struggled on the way down because it was torrential rain, right? The guide said it was called troll weather because you think the trolls come out. It was just torrential rain. And um, so it was like pouring down these steps that you're having to climb down. And it was hard. I mean, it was one of the most amazing things I've ever done, but like we just came back to the ship afterwards and just ate and went to bed. Like I was falling asleep for dinner. <laughs> And I'm still tired because we've woken up at 4 a.m. It's 4 a.m. Wow. Crazy. You're crazy, girl. We're sailing into Olden today. My bag is hanging up, actually, because everything got soaked through. But we're okay now. I was worried about us getting ill, but I, I think we're fine. Yeah, we're sailing into Olden, which is, like, one of the fjords we kind of sail... We sail through fjords to get to, and apparently it's amazing. So we're up really early. <laughs> still quite tired but I'm actually I'm waking up I'm feeling better so we're gonna go just for the next couple hours this morning we've got another walk today at half nine but uh we're just gonna go watch the fjords go by so I thought I'd take you with me <laughs> no book update but I'll probably have one after I've finished getting ready because I still have been I've been reading a bit here and there so I'm definitely only gonna read the two I was hoping I'd be on the Women in Cabin 10 by now because this is really like the fjords. Do you know what I mean? This and tomorrow is really when we're really in the fjords. So I would like, maybe I'll try and finish Fatal Crossing today throughout the day when I don't look like this. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go first into uh, Tom's grandma's room. because She's got the balcony. And then we're going to walk around the promenade deck and watch kind of both sides and we might get in a hot tub this morning and kind of sit and watch everything go by so let's go
rest your life. <laughs> <laughs> okay hello it is wednesday <laughs> how are we all doing so i feel like this the first part of this vlog um we've been so busy the first two port days to van Gogh and olden were like our days where we had excursions booked where we had a lot planned and the second half of the holiday is the reading part so <laughs> We're gonna get a lot of reading done. We're definitely gonna read these two books now. So, to update you all, we got woken up at 8 a.m. today with an announcement. Basically, today we were supposed to be docking at Helsilt and tomorrow, Haugesund. <laughs> I forgot then what it was. But because of winds, they can't dock at either of them. But we are gonna dock tonight at somewhere called Alisund from like seven o'clock tonight to midday tomorrow. So we still get to go ashore again once more, but we are missing the other two ports that we were supposed to do. But we were only gonna walk around all together in Hellasut and Haugesund we planned to have a spa day anyway, cause it was cheaper to go do like massages and the spa stuff on a day that we were at a port and we weren't really bothered by Haugesund. So actually we're not that upset. <laughs> everything's okay but in terms of the book I have been reading quite a bit more I think I'm definitely gonna finish this today because we're just gonna be doing like some quizzes and stuff um I'm on page 256 and I'm still enjoying it I will say it does read like a debut for me you've been very very arsh nice to meet you Kelly, Kelly arsh not much has happened, I feel like, in the most recent 150 pages compared to the first 100 pages. We've just been going around, like, interviewing all different people, but in a way that kind of scrambles my brain. Like, I'm forgetting who is who. I feel like a lot of the men all have, like, ER names, like Fisher, Turner. Like, I'm just <laughs> really struggling to understand who is who. And there's some people who have multiple names, and I'm just really struggling to remember who is who. I feel like what is gonna end up happening with this is it's not gonna be a fair play mystery. I feel like, if I had to make a prediction now, it could be completely wrong, but I feel like it's gonna turn a bit more thrillery in the sense that it's not gonna be, the reveals aren't gonna be stuff that's been like laid down for us. It's gonna be complete shocks. It's gonna be complete curveballs and kind of gonna go off and veer in a different direction. That could be completely wrong, but that's like my current prediction of what's gonna happen. It's good. Like it's really, it's an enjoyable read. I feel like I'm gonna prefer the Ruth Ware one just cause I love Ruth Ware. I mean, this is still probably like a, a four, maybe a 3.5, but depending on how it ends. I am still really enjoying it. It's a very, very easy read. I think it's a really good debut. I'm just getting a bit confused sometimes. <laughs> and I feel like the two main characters, the perspective character we're reading from, who's the ship's officer, I like, but the Scotland Yard policeman who he's like following around is a bit one note for me. I feel like he's just a bit, like he's not giving me much. You know what I mean? Where's the flavor? Where's the flavor in this? Oh, I don't know if I mentioned, but like, Art, the art world, the high art world, is a lot to do with this book. Did I mention this? A lot of the the murder and like stuff that's going on is revolving around a painting that was on board. So I'm excited to see how that goes. But it feels like there's a lot of different leads. Like there's a lead with the policeman's past, there's a least lead with the officer's past, and then there's the main mystery. And I feel there's a lot. There's like the murder, then there's like painting stuff going on. I feel like there's a lot that we've got to uncover in the last like. 150 pages but anyway we're gonna go get some lunch we're just gonna pick up some pizza like takeaway pizza and then we've got a jukebox game oh my god by the way how cute was the sail away in olden yesterday wasn't that so cute like all the people in olden come out and wait <laughs> it was really cute that was like a really fun part of the holiday so yeah the second half of this holiday is gonna be more reading than the first half has been because we haven't got as much like crazy stuff planned i've finally recovered from <laughs> the pulpit rock hike <laughs> I just finished a fatal crossing. It is what day is it? What day is it? Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> it's Thursday. We popped into Allison, but I didn't film any of it because it was kind of just like a port stop. So I didn't end up filming any filming any of it. But I finished a fatal crossing. This book's interesting. <laughs> oh no. This 
has now gone downhill. I'm gonna give it a 3.5. There were parts of it I really loved and parts of it I didn't. The ending has a very interesting, I don't wanna call it a twist, but it's like some interesting stuff happens in the kind of last 30 pages that you really don't expect. It does go on a very different route and I do admire that. I can see it again kind of harkening back to some classic mysteries that I read in the past, but mm, the main mystery just didn't, didn't like light my world on fire. The characters I kept getting confused between them all. There's like Mr. and Mrs. Green, Mr. and Mrs. Weber. Like there's all these people and they are all the same. Like all of our supporting characters bar the ship's officer and the private investigator are like literally the same people. <laughs> so I just felt like I kept getting confused as to who was who and who we were suspecting and like what parts of the plot related to different people. I just really, I could not remember it. And it was a lot of just like going between all of these different people and talking to them. Now I do enjoy that in some mysteries. Take for example, Murder on the Orient Express where a lot of it is him just interviewing, Poirot just interviewing all of the characters. But that book has done so well. Whereas this, it just felt a bit meandering and like just not much happened. There wasn't much evolution to the story. There wasn't much, you know, you kind of expect like reveals throughout. There was kind of just work up to the one big reveal, but it wasn't bad. You know, I would probably give this author another go with whatever mystery they come out with next. I think for a debut, it was pretty good. But my favorite part of it was reading it on the ship and like reading it in reference to what was happening on the ship. But anyway, now we're gonna go to the spa. We're gonna go in this like jacuzzi spa sauna area and then we've got a massage, but I'm gonna take the woman in cabin 10 with me. I'm gonna finish this. <laughs> on the holiday, I'm gonna try. I'm a bit sad I didn't end up reading it through the fjords. I'm not sure if it is set in the fjords or just in Norway, I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna go start it there. And um, yeah, I'd like to get maybe a hundred pages into it today. So we'll see how I do. Oh, mentioning Agatha Christie, they're showing Death on the Nile today in the cinema, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna go just cause of timing, but we'll see, I'll show you if I do go. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go to the spa now and I'm gonna start The Woman in Cabin 10. So it is the last day, it's our last sea day today and the sun is finally out again. Oh, I'm gonna pop in here because I know I can hear me speak. Oh wait, people can. <laughs> I have got to the end of part two of The Woman in Cabin 10, so I'm on page 91 and I'm really enjoying it. This makes me think that I should give a Fatal Crossing three stars, not 3.5 because the difference feels quite marked I would say. Okay so basically our protagonist wakes up <laughs> and someone's robbing her flat and she's very traumatized from that but she then uh, a couple days later has to go on this work trip to this cruise in the, in the Norwegian fjords on like one of the pages um, there's a picture of the owner of the boat getting married in Stavanger <laughs> to his wife and I was like whoa. So yeah she's on this luxury cruise but there's literally only like 20 people on this cruise max. So it's not like this one where there's like 4,000. It's like a luxury boat. And um, she's kind of just gotten on the ship and she earlier in the night had met this girl who's in the room next to her who was quite young, very different than a lot of the other guests on the ship who are like rich journalists and stuff like that. And then she's just heard a splash that sounds like a body hitting water outside her cabin. And that's where part two ends. And I don't, I'm just really enjoying it. I really love Ruth Ware's writing. She's never let me down in terms of her writing. The plot is moving fast. I feel like we've had a lot of stages in the plot. I feel like there's a lot going on. I just feel like it's a lot better than The Fatal Crossing. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like a facial crossing can just tell it's a debut and Ruth where I just know I can trust and I'm reading it so much quicker so yeah we're gonna play some like games on board I think and we're gonna have lunch in a bit but I'm gonna carry on reading. I'm reading it really quick actually. I did get the audiobook for this but I'm not loving it so I think I'm just gonna keep reading it physically on my own. Life is a winding road no telling where it goes. Driving. Okay. Um, <laughs> we've ordered the burger that they say is the best burger at sea. So we're gonna put it to the test. Just realize it looks like I'm dabbing. I'm Just frozen. <laughs> Let me figure out where the road goes. <laughs> mm. 
is really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Oh, I'm so a positive bitch. Food. You guys. Mm, yeah, it's quite good. <laughs> so I've decided I'm definitely gonna give a fatal crossing. Oh, you can see the the mirror. Um, I'm gonna give it three stars. The more I read this, the more I realize how it feels to really love reading. <laughs> I don't know, with the Fatal Crossing, I just thought like, oh, I'm really busy, we're doing so much on holiday, because I was like kind of having to make myself pick it up. I was like, it's still good, it's just that I'm busy. But with this, I literally can't put it down. Ruth Ware will never let me down. There, I'm saying it, mm, I'm saying it. Ruth Ware's never gonna let me down. I can just rely on her for like a fucking good thriller. You know what I mean? It's so good. <laughs> I'm really, really enjoying it. Now, you just compare it between the two. I think the writing is incredible. Ruth Ware can write. Ruth I can really write. Like, I, I'm really having an awakening after reading A Fatal Crossing and then reading this. I'm like, wow, this is what it feels like. <laughs> this is what it feels like. I love her. Whereas in that, I didn't feel like much happened. We've had so many good reveals. This is my, I feel like this looks strange. It's my water bottle, by the way, <laughs> in the mirror. Yeah, whereas in Fatal Crossing, nothing happened. There's been so many great little reveals in this that like, change who you're suspecting or change how you're viewing information and where we've gone to now i'm on page two two i've just listened to a bit more actually two two eight i think it's just getting so good it's just gone down a route that i really wasn't expecting i was thinking about it i've given ruth Ware two five stars and one four star and i think this might be another five star which would cement ruth Ware as one of my favorite authors ever she is just like a great thriller author isn't she she's just like a great standard thriller and you know what this is making me much more excited to read the it girl which is ruth ware's new book coming out this year not that i wasn't excited but i feel like the, the synopsis wasn't like my favorite that i was like you know 100 percent excited for but it's making me a lot more excited i think our main character lo who's trying to investigate what's going on the ship she's amazing <laughs> she's really a really interesting character who i'm really enjoying reading from her perspective there's been a few like mixed media elements very few but like some emails and some uh, news articles and some forums which are set after the current events so it's really interesting learning information from that then then that makes you more stressed out for the present day events the setting on the on the boat i was a bit nervous actually because i really enjoyed the big ship in fatal crossing like the big ship i'm on now whereas this is literally 20 people max can be on this ship and i was a bit nervous about that but actually it's better because you kind of know your cast of characters you know the maximum of people that you can suspect so i'm enjoying it in that aspect i'm so excited to find out what's going on it's just gone down a really interesting route i really feel like i can't predict it i'm just really enjoying it ruth where yeah she gets what i want ruth where gets it <laughs> I'm gonna pretty much just finish this this evening. I just, I'm flying through it. I absolutely cannot put it down. This is a, like up there with, well, I love all the Ruth Wares I've read. Apart from the death of Mrs. Westaway, that was a four star, but this is feeling like another five star. It's just, how does she do it? I just really feel like I can rely on her. You know, <laughs> some thriller authors were up and down, but Ruth Ware can write one of the best modern day thriller authors i think the setting of the norwegian fjords having actually i'm glad that i'm reading this having had the whole experience rather than maybe reading this on like the first or second port day oh. <laughs> i remember thinking i'm about to beat this bitch up i'm glad i'm reading it having been in that setting throughout the week so i really know what she's talking about with the wind and the weather and the location and and all of that and the people you know like i really feel like i have a good grasp on that so i'm just so glad that i'm reading this now god what a good book what a good book so yeah it's currently uh quarter to six we're gonna have dinner in maybe like an hour an hour and a half and then it's just like packing we gotta be at the cabins by eight tomorrow morning and then it's just the the car ride home so i think i am probably gonna finish this tonight if not i will finish it in the car ride home tomorrow yeah i can't wait to see where this goes okay so i'm obviously back home now i finished the woman in cabin 10 on that friday night when i last spoke to you but i couldn't film i literally finished it at like midnight and we'd had to pack all our bags and pack everything up and leave it outside the door to be collected and taken away and i loved it i'm giving it five stars i didn't realize i was went and looked on goodreads after the holiday and i didn't realize that a this is her most read book in terms of ratings by quite a lot and it, not a lot of people love it it's not like the most popular popular but i 
loved it. From when I last spoke to you, the book goes in a very different direction. And I don't want to spoil anything, but I will just say it does a great job of keeping suspense and keeping the pace and keeping anticipation going in that situation. That's what I'm gonna say. I think it's quite difficult to do and I think Ruth Ware did it so so well. The ending I loved. Like the end like you know climax of the book. I was literally like I could not take my eyes off the page. Like I'm a I love reading again, you guys. I love reading again. Isn't, isn't life great? Isn't life great? I love reading again. I'm so ready to just love reading. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm just ready for it. <laughs> I love my family. I love my work. I love my life. <laughs> The mixed media elements that I mentioned earlier, like the newspapers and the forums and stuff, the information that was given to them, mm, it made me so anxious at the end because it suggests all of things happen at the end and I was like, please God no, please God no, please God no. And I actually got emotional. There's like a little, little twist, a little just moment right at the end. And I almost cried. Mm, yeah, I almost cried. I got really attached to the characters in this. I got really attached to the mystery. I can't believe how much I love this. And Ruth Ware has now gotten three five stars to me, which means she's officially a favorite author. Like top tier favorite authors are the ones who can get three five stars from me reading three books from them. Like that's top. But like Ruth Ware, I mean, she's gotten two, three five stars and one four star. I mean, come on. Now my question to you guys is, which of Ruth Ware's backlist should I read next? Obviously the It Girl's coming out. I should probably pre-order that like straight away. I've only got, I think, The Lion Game and In a Dark Dark Wood left to read from Ruth Ware in terms of her backlist. Which one do you think I would prefer? Let me know, because I, I want to just read all of Ruth Ware, because I've had nothing but good luck. I think this book was great. <laughs> now, was reading it in the setting, did that have something to do with it? Yes, but that's the whole point of this video. <laughs> like, did that help me enjoy it more? You know, when they're talking about how, for example, the fear of going in the water, right? Getting thrown off the ship. The water is cold. Like, the place is cold cold like I think being in that setting helped me understand the stakes a lot more and just enjoy the book more yeah did that help yeah but I mean like I said that's the whole point of what we're doing here. but I really really just loved it and I'd recommend it and I think don't listen to people who say it's not great I think it's great I think it's so well written it's just a fun thriller right I don't think this is like groundbreaking do you know what I mean it's not gonna be life-changing but is that what you read thrillers for not necessarily so I loved it I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog following me on holiday on the cruise I had a lot of fun I had a lot of fun on holiday it was a really great holiday such a beautiful place I don't know if the camera really captured some of the settings how incredible they were like how mind-boggling um but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you got into the end of the video comment the rain emoji I'm still holding by Pulpit Rock. I want you guys to know, right? In Pulpit Rock, I was, I've been editing the video and I feel like I look like an idiot. I feel like I look pathetic. We didn't film on the difficult parts. We filmed on the easy parts, right? We were like, oh, we can walk again. I, when I was fighting for my life in the trenches trying to climb up this hill, I, we weren't filming that. So I want you guys to know the bits you saw of us just strolling along in the B-roll, that's the easy parts of the walk, which are few and far between. <laughs> yeah, comment the rain, like water emoji if you got into the end, anything like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.